Jumanji. Huh? The next level. Jumanji 3 or Jumanji 4, if you count Zathura. Or Jumanji 2, if you completely forget about the one with Robin Williams. We uh, saw this a couple days ago at a real D3D screening, which, by the way, I'm really happy to be a part of that community over there. Ryan Garcia, Sarah Edge with 40X. Thank you guys so much for inviting us. You guys throw such wonderful events. On top of that, the 3D is always consistently great. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so yeah. much. They always make sure to screen it in the best 3D projection possible. I actually really enjoyed this movie a lot. So, John, what's this plot description you wrote? I wrote this myself. I take full credit as the Internet Movie Database. The gang is back, but the game has changed. As they return to rescue one of their own, the players will have to brave parts unknown from arid deserts to snowy mountains to escape the world's most dangerous game. And this time around, as you saw in the trailers, The Rock is embodying Danny DeVito. And Kevin Hart, Danny Glover. Exactly. And Karen Gillan is, is who she was before. Oh, yeah. And Jack Black is the black dude this time. So here's how I would summarize my experience with this in a nutshell. I laughed significantly more than I did with Welcome to the Jungle. However, I still think Welcome to the Jungle is a better made movie. This movie is uh, McClunky. McClunky. I think there are some real just tone deaf moments. Sometimes the energy does drag. However, there's enough true hysterical laughs that I had throughout this film that uh, I, I would have to say, go watch. I, I feel like if you like Welcome to the Jungle, you'll like this one. I feel like you might like it more at home, honestly. But I wouldn't say don't watch it. And I don't think it's a bad movie necessarily. Like, a lot of times it sounds like a cop-out to say, the movie's fun, it's entertaining. It sounds like you're trying to be nice to the film. <laughs> but really, that's just what you can say with this film. <laughs> it's it's fun, it's entertaining, it's not great, and it's not as well-made, or there's not as much wonder to it, and it's not as much energy as, as it was to the second one. I'm a little lower uh, uh, enthusiasm than you are, I think. I definitely enjoyed myself, and by the time the movie was done, I had a fair amount of things that I was happy about, but as far as this goes, it felt kind of like a pale imitation of the previous movie. Especially because I was really looking forward to seeing The Rock and Kevin Hart do Danny DeVito and Danny Glover and do something different there. I never really felt like the movie built on that other than repeating that joke from the trailer. So I, I didn't get as many laughs as I wanted to, partly because I felt like I saw the funny in the trailer and then a couple of jokes would sneak up on me. But the things that really brought me in the most were sort of the newer characters. And again, when Act 3, everything kind of comes to a head, that was when I was most immersed into the movie. So not with without its charms, but I thought they could have done a fair amount better with this. I'm about 50-50 with you uh, on your opinion here. Looking back at Welcome to the Jungle, what I think made the, the cast chemistry really shine is because you have these teenage characters and then they go into the game and they turn into these avatars of these famous people <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and the famous people do their own thing. They get to be their own three-dimensional characters. They're not trying to be the teenage performers. And I think, weirdly, the times it really limited the performance and at times it made it really funny is the fact that The Rock is doing a Danny DeVito impersonation and he's not being a character he's being a caricature of Danny DeVito yeah. and Kevin Hart same thing I think he's better <laughs> than The Rock because well, his the, character beat is more rich yeah know? and he, he gets a lot more writing to do and, and like there's this, the whole joke with The Rock is Danny DeVito there's a thing called a callback in comedy and there's another thing where you're like you've repeated this joke an awful lot now <laughs> there's a rule of three and there's a rule of 33 and they went with the 33 <laughs> Re Same th thing with Jack Black. I think they were actually a little bit scared to go all out. I thought Ooh, of that. I, I, yeah. Because he's a white guy and on the inside he's supposed to be a black guy. And mm -hmm. I think there's something about the performance that felt held back. But that's not to say that there were times where, like I said, it's weird. There are times where they felt limited and there are times where it just felt flat. But there are times where they are so funny still. Yeah, <laughs> and, it definitely <laughs> still has those flint spark moments where the cast chemistry comes to life. Yeah. And, and there are some unexpected things with how they use the avatars that are some of the things that make this movie fresher than the first that add to the fun. What they did that was different, we're on 50-50 with you on the character thing, is because I weirdly felt like Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson got more screen time in this film together as like the duo of Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson yeah. because of the fact that they're embodying like the people in the real world are people who had a falling out and are former best friends, so there's this whole like resolution of conflict, which is a riff on the first one. Yeah, yeah um, with Hef, <laughs> and Spencer and, yeah, except, and everybody really. But like I said, 
the, the issue that it comes down to is they're doing impersonations of famous, respected actors, yeah. and they didn't need to do that with the uh, with the teenage characters. Well, yeah, it's like there wasn't a <laughs> distinction. It was just, oh, now The Rock is going to be kind of insecure, and we're going to watch him play that character out, whereas this was like, yeah, you're these two specific people and never adapt yeah. to the world beyond that. So there are times where Dwayne Johnson's hilarious, and there's some bits that will be like, it, this movie's not exactly a, <laughs> like a film that's filled with spoilers, but there are bits that if I told you what the setup of it was, it would ruin the fun of it. There's like some physical gags that happen with The Rock that I did think were hilarious. Where the movie, I think, misses the mark a lot, which I thought Welcome to the Jungle definitely got down better, was making you feel like you're in uh, some weird VR video game of sorts. I would forget that you're in a video game in this movie. It did feel more perfunctory. Even the riddles sometimes felt kind of like, eh, we didn't really need this. It's a joke at most. It would kind of drag at times. That sense of adventure to it. This is one of those movies where you're like, don't think about the rules, but... When they when they, the when they bring the rules to <laughs> the attention, it's all about the rules. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the rules. There's the rule of three uh, with their barcodes showing how much life they have yeah. left. That motif did not feel like it hit as hard as the first. Like the first movie, I was like, oh man, these lives, if they run out, they're going to yeah. die. And in this movie, I knew it, but I, I never really got the tension of it. It felt like a thing that they kept having to be reminded to throw into the plot again. It's like, you know, they're going to be fine, but there still is a big lack of stakes. And I think that has a lot to do with trying to commit to the bit of impersonating Danny Glover and Danny DeVito. In the beginning when they're like, clueless and like oh well look at my body like that's all really funny but then there are moments where it's like later in the movie and crazy stuff's happening where, where I like they'd be freaking out they'd be pulled into the danger of the situation they wouldn't just be like eh, I'm gonna make some sarcastic quip you and, know? and if they were to remain meh I'm gonna make some sarcastic clip then they're all gonna die yeah. <laughs> they're gonna all die in the game and that's the, <laughs> the troublesome thing about the way this movie lands and it's funny because I feel like it's all there they had the idea locked and they could have used a few more drafts on the script to make it really Rich because even Jumanji itself, they don't really build upon, even though they go to the trouble of being like, the game's broken, things are weird and different, but they're not really. There's really only one element that that plot line goes to serve. Well, that's, like, that was my issue with the rules, because yeah. they say the game's broken, and that's why everyone has different avatars. But why is this a completely different game now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they've stepped into the sequel to this video game. Which is fine, well, which is like, yeah, you want to But that's not the places. setup of the, the movie. That's yeah. the that, it's the, the, the setup of the movie is it's the same game. They don't address it. I'm like, does it know that they beat the last level so they're being thrown into a new level? Or, or yeah, what, yeah, what is exactly happening? It's interesting that the game's broken. Let's explore that. <laughs> yeah. Let's make that clear. Because I thought like, oh, with the game broken, that means crazy stuff is going to happen. Yeah. But it just plays out like an, a regular game. It plays <laughs> out a lot like the first movie. Yeah, it's just it's a just regular like, oh, game. We had to beat Jumanji again, except in the snow and in a desert and with the hound instead of Bobby Cannavale. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Rory McCann does a fine job bringing presence. I thought, uh, you know, and there's some new players in here. Aquafina, I don't remember being in the trailers, but uh, there, was, really. there was a big announcement about her being in this, and she has some pretty good moments where she really yeah. shines. I think Karen Gillan uh, got way more to do in this film. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. she's the straight man in this movie. She's, like, holding everything yeah. down while, like, Fridge freaks out and the other two are being Well, she's old. the only one in truly familiar territory, yeah. whereas everyone has a bit of a bit to do. It's really what you want from this movie. If you, if you think you just want to sit back and have fun with it and be with your friends again yeah, yeah. then i i think it does the, it it did exactly what i just wanted from it i had plenty of criticisms about the welcome to the jungle but i still walked out with the same thing of it's fun <laughs> you know yeah and that's yeah. really all i care about with this is i just want to walk out being like yeah i had a lot of laughs and the cast was good it will never match the imagination <laughs> levels of the one with robin williams yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but at this point both movies i felt had more potential than what they lean into with what they can do with creative set pieces as opposed to just a, you know, run-of-the-mill adventure where you kind of forget that you yeah. have this thing where you can mess around with the fact that you're in a video game. Yeah. Yeah. And in a day and age when we're trying still to crack the video game yeah. movie code, I feel like these movies could be a tremendous opportunity for that. It didn't hit quite as many of those sweet spots. And yeah, the first reboot wasn't perfect. I just thought it had more color and life. But uh, like I said, by the end of this, I liked the setup. I liked the ultimate payoffs. By the third act, for the most part, I was thrilled and invested in having fun. So there's yeah. definitely stuff to enjoy. It just kind of came out to be like a three for me. Jumanji, the next level. Who do you think should join this fantastic cast? Who do you want to see The Rock and Kevin Hart impersonate? Al Pacino. So Kevin Hart. De Niro. And, and, and The Rock impersonate Danny Glover and Danny Jack Black 
uh, black guy. So you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell to get notified whenever we got a YouTube video up. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this review as well. And I'd like to end this with a patron of the day shout out to a man named Philip J. Smith the Jr. Ooh. You haven't been responding to me or hitting me up at all. I think you got to take your response time to the next. Jungle. John with the interrupting again. Shout him out. Oh, you know what, Phil? I'm worried about you, and I'm a little worried that maybe you've been sucked into your own Jumanji experience. We miss you. We need to know things about you to make these shout-outs more engaging. So uh, why don't you come on out and just talk to us, man? Don't be like Spencer in the movie, running away from your friends and not facing your problems, because we love you and uh, would love to, you know, save Jumanji next to you or something. How'd I do? Give me a letter grade. 45 seconds. <laughs> I mean, that's worth $15. <laughs>